I hope y'all are. This episode, yeah, this episode is about Ellen F. Eglin. Egg, I, look, I messed it up on that night. Yeah, the wash, the washer ring a joint, the ring out the water, so it makes it easier for it to dry. That's what she gave the world. That was this episode. That's, this is what we're talking about on this episode. Word. So salute to that. Before we even get started, yo, the, the Iowa caucus threw such a monkey wrench in the game, didn't it? That was such a crazy situation. Like, we already knew Trump was going to be that dude. Then it was DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Wampa Sampi was just out my man had to look they were going so hard on him they had his wife flipping like they was really going at it going at his wife like yo we just don't know what y'all are it's not even about your politics we can't identify with you visually we don't think because you guys don't look like us you'll be right for us that's technically what they said they thought they were muslims and they didn't look the part i can't pronounce your name your name is isn't Christian enough. That was really the vibe. Like, could you imagine somebody telling you that you're not worth it because of that? And then he's like, yo, I gotta drop out. That was the reality check. That was the reality check. Like, I'm pretty sure he was like, yo, you know Trump's gonna be number one. I gotta at least be number three. I think even if he was still last place, if he didn't hear that and realize, I'm not gonna say deception, I'm going to say, um, delusion that one lives in. It's almost like, you mean to tell me, nobody in his camp took the time to go, yo, you are fighting a uphill battle. Like, I know in the first debate he said it, like, he, he, you know what I'm saying, he basically stole from Obama and said his little thing, but he's not understanding. This is a different level. You are playing in a different field. And I think that was the thing. Remember, I told y'all, my man's like, he got the Trump playbook. It don't matter. That skin tone ain't look right. That name don't sound right. You're not the right fit. You know what I'm saying? And the reality hit. And then I think the fact that his wife got caught up into that, and she probably was back at the hotel like, yo, no. Nope, we're not going through this anymore. You, yeah, hey, I, yo, we're cool. Maybe and in his defense, I'm feeling like, yo, he's going to go, yo, I'll just slide in when Trump gets in. When Trump gets in, I'm going to find me a space. I'm going to show what I can do, and then they'll love me so I can run again. I don't even think that's going to work. That's really not going to work. I told y'all before, Obama was an anomaly. Once it was like, yo, Obama can't run again, you look outside of Hillary Clinton, it was a bunch of old white men. It, that's where it went back to. It went back to old white men. There's Republican primary. Yeah, them dudes aren't as old, but you best believe it's gonna be Trump. But Trump's done. It's gonna go. It's still gonna be old white men. For all the people who want to talk crazy about Obama, that was the thing. Obama was supposed to be the turning point. You know what I'm saying? To get away from old white dudes. It was supposed to be. Okay, yeah, really, anybody can get into this. That's why you had the younger Spanish dudes. That's why you had the females. It was like, oh, this can seriously happen. You can seriously become president and not have to be an old white guy. Okay, cool. And it was like, nah, nah, we, we, nope. We're back to that. You got to have a little gray hair up on there somewhere. You got to, mm-mm, nah, man, mm-mm, mm-mm. And he just didn't get it. He, he, was, he was fighting a good fight. Reality check hit up out there in the Iowa caucus, and he was just oof, and, and still kept it and kept it civil. Backed out, endorsed Trump. That's how you're supposed to do it. Salute. You know what I'm saying? I, I gave this man a lot of I, yo. He has some wacky thoughts, theories. His ideas are outlandish, but I got I have to give him that respect. He bowed out and was like, yo, boom. Just you know, if it matters or not. I endorse Trump. Of course you would. You were out here basically Trump Jr. Why wouldn't you? Skipping to something else. I don't know if y'all saw 
It made the rounds for like maybe, for me, it seemed like two days and then it was over with. It wasn't this big, week long thing like Cat Williams or nothing. It was like, like two days and then it stopped. And that was, um, most deaf had said Drake was poppy. He was like, yeah, it's something you listen to in Target. And then just keep it real. Yeah. Target, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, uh, it, it's, that's what it is. There's no, there's no, people got mad. People were really upset. You had people going, well, who's most deaf? First of all, that's how beautiful hip hop is. You can love a, a aspect of it and never know the other side of it at all. Then you had guys who did, and this is another thing that I, and I call that the soldier boy effect. Dudes do their diligence, do diligence and do homework on these artists, but they don't, but because you didn't live in that era, you can't totally comprehend it. Remember when like Soldier Boy actually went out his way and Wikipedia Ice T, but still didn't understand what made Ice T Ice T. It's like yo, Ice T is an OG. You would have had to live and breathe hip hop during Ice T's reign. You know what I'm saying? And somebody gonna listen and go, Ice T ain't never reign. Nah, 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 nah. There was a time on the West Coast. It was Ice T, Too Short, N.W.A. And everybody was talking about, oh my God, N.W.A. is the most craziest, the most dangerous group in the world. And then Ice T goes and gets with a rock group, drops Cop Killer, and, and that's the thing. And they went, hip hop's out of control, rap's out of control. It's like, hold on, that wasn't even a rap song. But y'all see Ice T's face, and y'all know that's Ice T. And then all of a sudden, his, his rock group, becomes a rap group. That's how dangerous Ice-T was. That's what I'm saying when I say his reign. Like the time where Ice-T was completely on 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 everybody's mind. He was in New Jack City. He had the other joint was Surviving the Game. First hip hop movie. First movie with a hip hop guy in it where they didn't have to be a rapper or do rappings or anything. It was or dancing or it had nothing to do with music. It was a straight like that could have been anybody, but it was Ice T. You know what I'm saying? That's slightly before Will Smith. And it's like, yo, Ice T was that guy. They did their homework on him. And then, you know, so dudes is out here doing their homework on most. I'm like, yo, most was saying, I ain't never been to a store outside of a hip hop orientated store that has ever played most deaf, let alone whom he says. I'm sorry, y'all. Let's get MTV. If it wasn't just playing, if it wasn't for MTV jams or MTV, like, yeah, I got, about that time, rap, rap, yo, MTV, your raps was gone. If it wasn't for MTV jams, yeah. They won't just play in my Umi says. Why? Because that was a black song. And there's nothing wrong, by the way, with being a pop artist. You're a pop artist by way of hip hop music. Pop music is short for popular music. There's two, there's four ways to become a popular artist. By accident, you know what I'm saying? By making sure that you make that kind of music to be that, but still stay in a genre. Go out and be a pop star. Oh, so I guess it's three. My bad. I said four, right? Yeah, whatever. There's three. Those are the three ways. You accidentally become that, which is what happens with a lot of people. Most most people don't go out their way to be pop stars. You make that music, you hope that it gets popular in your area, in your in your lane, and then it blows up. Yeah, outcast, I, you know, Dre didn't go out of his way going, hey, y'all, it's gonna be the biggest thing wrong the world. Nah. That he did a joint and everybody knew outcast. That album went platinum, quadruple or whatever it went, mainly off of that. It happened. There was a time when Snoop was the most popular rapper. Didn't make anything pop. It was just you looked up everything about Snoop's vibe, the 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 the, the, the language, the style, the attitude appealed on a pop level. No matter how much the parents hated it, it became pop. MTV loved Snoop. You know what I'm saying? That's how that goes. You do that. Then there's artists who, I, in my mind, I'm. I'm I'm going to say it, like Drake. Drake is a pop artist who uses hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? That was how that goes. You, you know what I'm saying? Taylor Swift was a country artist who then became a pop star. 
know what I'm saying? Because one day you look up and it's like, yo, her joints are popular. Then she became a pop star. Then that's, you know what I'm saying? So she stopped even making country music. She just became a pop star. Whitney Houston did R&B, became a pop star who did R&B. Beyonce, R&B, became a pop star. Rihanna, Eminem, like that's a different lane where you're like, this is what you do. It's just popular. Then there's the Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake's, Madonna's, you know what I'm saying? Like the people who make pop music. You know what I'm saying? And the difference between Madonna and Justin Timberlake is, or Britney Spears is, Madonna was always ahead of the curve. You know what I'm saying? Like Madonna took stuff that was underground and made it mainstream. She took the whole house house music vibe, techno music. She took the whole Vogue thing. That was a that was a subgenre underground thing. That voguing thing was underground. She came in, Vogue, Vogue, man, that, that made it pop. She was always ahead of the curve on that. That's different. Her pop element is a different element. Then you look at Justin Timberlake way. Oh, that's the new sound. I'm gonna switch to the new sound. Oh, that's the new sound. I'm gonna switch over here to the new sound. That's a different thing. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, you had like when folk music was quote unquote pop. All of a sudden, people start trying to make that kind of music. Sunny and Cher were a pop group. You know what I'm saying? There's it's always been people who just wanted to fill that void and make something. Oh, that's what's hot. Let me put a little a lot of bells and whistles on it and make it grander and make it pop. It's always been that. That's one of the things happened with disco. Disco, look, you looked up and disco had anybody doing disco. There was records, disco records where old ladies were doing disco. Hip hop was close to that. You know what I'm saying? Rapping Ron with the Ronald Reagan joint. We was, we was right there. But the but the hood kept it kept it straight. Hammer became a pop star. People don't remember that first album of Hammers. People don't remember, let's get it started. They don't remember all that. They remember Can't Touch This, and then they keep it moving. Can't Touch This was it. Can't Touch This didn't, was not a pop song. Can't, can't Touch This was just evolution of what Hammer's sound was anyway. You take, um, let's get it started, turn this mother out, and Can't Touch This, they're all the same song. They all have, let's get it started, up, 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 up. Can't Touch This, boom, boom, can't touch this. Then, oh, 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 stop. Hammer time. Yeah, it's all the same stuff. He didn't switch up and become pop. It was just that sample was poppy. Stop. Hammer time. Can't touch this. That's that was the that was the get down. Turn this mother out could have been it could have been turn this mother out if it was a more popular beat. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But then he became that. Now, somebody like Young MC, I to me. That bust the groove there. To me, that was a song trying to be pop. What was the, what was the man? Rico Suave was trying to be pop. Vanilla Ice was trying to be pop-ish. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, there's lanes. Don't, I mean, don't hate on the man. Who's going to... Look, Drake is like anything else. Either you ride with it or you don't. You want to talk about somebody with bars? Drake has bars. The songs might not be what you're into, but the bars are there. The concepts have not evolved, but the bars are there. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's going to take away the impact Drake has in this music industry. You know what I'm saying? Drake Drake has an impact on the culture. And then, yo, so it is what it is. And I like the fact that he, he didn't, as far as I'm aware of, go out here and really get at him like he did with Joe Buttons. It's most deaf. And people were like, yo, I ain't never heard of this dude, man. Who's this dude barely be doing anything? Yeah, most deaf, most deaf has become Lauren Hill. Most deaf is that. Most deaf is an occasion. Like when they came out here to Cincinnati, that was the that was the headline. It was most deaf and Erica Badu was what was gonna bring the crowd out. Cause everybody's like, oh snap, most deaf, Yasmin Bay. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, ain't nobody seen him in a minute. Let's get that going. Word. 
That's how that goes. That's his situation now. He has placed himself in a situation where he is a a a um a must see event because it's a rarity. When Outcast ever gets back together, that's gonna be that. When when the day that you see Dre sign trying to sign something and go, yeah, we're gonna do something, me and Big Boy about to go on tour, everybody's gonna watch. You know what I'm saying? They go down south somewhere in Atlanta, something happens. Like what? This is the year, 30th year anniversary of their first album. And they go, yo, we're gonna do something together out here in Atlanta. That's gonna shut it down. It's gonna be because of Dre. Nobody has seen that dude in so long. And it's like, yo. And then they gonna blow your mind and throw some joints out there that you never heard before. Then they gonna blow your mind even more when they throw some joints out there that are brand new. As far as for the listening consumers concerned, as far as the audience is concerned. Oh like, yeah, we did this joint like a few years ago. Ain't nobody heard this. A few years ago, these dudes ain't been together for over decades now. Like oh something. That was the last time they connected. Oh whatever, whatever. So yeah, we talking over 10 years. Oh yeah, y'all wants to hear what this is. And the crowd is gonna just sit back on it. That's what they that's that's the beauty of it. That's what most deaf has become. Lauren Hill is that. Dre gonna be that. Dr. Dre is that. It's that's what made the Super Bowl thing so crazy. It's like, hold on, hold on. Dr. Dre is going to be there. Oh no, I got we got to see this. People was watching just because they were like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Dre? Dr. Dre. Alright, Rock him. Is that Rock him pops up every once in a while to an event. That's what makes those artists that. You know what I'm saying? When did we stop having personal opinions? And why why my personal opinion of an artist or a basketball player or a football player or a team or a show? When did it become a thing where it's really an attack on me or that artist that I'm going I rock with more than this one? You know what I'm saying? Everything is there. Check Tony Yayo now. Remember Tony Yayo on, on the Drink Champs? He was really going in on EF and on, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, yo you, how are you going in on this man's opinion? That's his opinion. You can agree to disagree. Like, uh, Big's my dude, though. I feel you, though. And keep it pushing. He's literally trying to have his conversation. Like, like I'm going to sway you. Ice Cube's catalog is vast. And if you're of a certain age, that's how, that's the other thing I don't get to. When you're of a certain age, most of the time, you're always putting things in a broader perspective. So when you're a most deaf, that's a broader perspective. I remember hearing most deaf tell people Lauryn Hill's first album was hip hop. And everybody's like, huh? How you figured? Then, you know what I'm saying? The more we actually listen to the beats and everything, and we listen to the, to the, to the vibe of it, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. There's nothing pop about that album at all. Norman Hill was such a big thing that it became what it became. But there was nothing pop about that album. That album was was just as hip hop as any Mary J album. You know what I'm saying? Because we love Mary J. It's just one of those things, man. Like dudes is out here. They they really go out here hunting to assassinate your character. If you go, mm, I'm not feeling dude. Why? Oh man, you, who is this dude? Man, who's most deaf? Man, forget him. He ain't about nothing. Dude, it's, it's that man's opinion. Anyway, Spectrum Charter People. Did y'all get the get the email, get the joint? That you can get Disney Plus free with the advertisements or whatever. And I, I had to look this up because we got the email. And I'm like, what? Let me look that up. Let me, because... It was just like last year sometime where they was beefing to the point you couldn't get nothing that was Disney owned on cable. So I'm like, let me see what's going on. Let me look into it. Looked into it. I was like, oh, I saw what it was. Then I saw somebody's YouTube page talking about it. And they were like, yo, this is a great thing for Disney Plus because Spectrum, you know, paid crazy paper to get that. Then they get to actually have real commercial breaks. Because, you know, streaming services have those those YouTube-type commercial breaks. Mm-mm. Now they get to have real commercial breaks, which even makes more money for them. Because if you're watching that way, 
you're gonna watch all the, you can't fast forward, you gotta take these commercials and ride with them. That's more money on Disney. That guy also said, but this also seemed like it defeating the purpose. The whole point of all these streaming services were to cut the cord of cable and get away. What happens if the rest of these people do it? They're not, they're not. If you have, if you've paid attention to Netflix, if you, if you still have Netflix, Paramount Plus has stuff on Netflix. HBO Max, the Max, has stuff on Netflix. Like, original content. And, and the crazy thing is, people are watching it who didn't have the Max or HBO. And they're like, yo, Insecure, dope. Like, what? yeah, Insecure's always been dope. What is on? Oh, you just start watching it because it's on Netflix. I got you. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Disney, my, I don't know if Disney does have anything out there on there. But everybody's coming back to Netflix. Netflix is always going to be that thing. You know what I'm saying? We got to do a joint on, 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 these, on these streaming services, man. It's just, because I keep telling y'all, my number, my, my top three will always be Netflix, Prime, and the Max. That's just going to always be that. There's none of these joints is touching this. None of them. Tubi is going to come up in that top five, crazy enough. Tubi, Tubi has automatically become a top five thing just from the angle of has if there's a home for guys who make movies, for ladies who make movies, for people who like make movies. I know on social media, especially when it's when as black people, we love to tell you how crazy some of these Tubi movies are. Trust me, it's not just black people. There's there's some white people movies where you're just like, no, they ain't even try to like wear the clothes to go for this 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 time period. What is they ain't even trying to get the language down right. Okay, all right, whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, it might not be as crazy editing issues, but there's other issues that you just got to go, who, who made this? But I, right. but yeah, we definitely got to talk about that because that seems like it's a defeating pur- defeating the purpose. Like you you made, you went out here, put all this money invested in it, and, and the whole concept was we have exclusivities. You know what I mean? I don't even know if that's a word. We got all this Marvel stuff. We they were that whole thing. They was calling that joint hostage. We got all this Marvel stuff. We got all this this Star Wars stuff. We got a couple of new joints here and there. We're doing all this. Now I can watch the What If on cable on Spectrum with commercials. You lost the exclusivity on it. Now I can watch the Mandalorian through cable with commercials. I don't know how long this this thing is going to last, but the fact that I can do that through cable means that cable one, one down, a few more to go. Cable one, because everybody was already telling you that, like um last year, these streaming these streaming services are losing money bad. They're bleeding out bad, and a lot of it was corporate greed. I ain't gonna get into that right now. We gonna have a we gonna have to have a whole joint for that. I keep saying that we gonna do that. This is this episode. Please do your research on on this woman and enjoy the show. Thank y'all. We add new spots to check us out. Google Podcasts. I got the email was is leaving. So if you're listening to us on Google Podcasts and you have subscribed or whatever, I don't know. Please subscribe, and that way you can get us on, I think, YouTube Music. YouTube Music will have podcasts. Rock with us on there. We have stuff on YouTube in general, Our World, Our Time. You can just type that up, and it might pop up on YouTube. I don't know. I'm guessing. I know I've, I've had to sit around and try to edit some stuff, like, do all this stuff to get the functionality joints going, and we're still in the process of that, so that's a whole other thing. Um, still on Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, who else, who else, we got, we got, um, Pandora, apparently Alexa and all that can get the joints, you know what I'm saying, the speaker joints out there can get it, um, it's a few joints, it's just joints out there, we out here, Stitcher has us, um, yeah, man, we, we everywhere, so thank you, and thank y'all for supporting what we do, man, what, 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 how I go down, this history stuff, I know sometimes I get the talking, 
about other stuff and I ramble off or whatever. And we're putting the, the little little joints, the little chapters to it. So if you don't want to hear all this and you just want to get to the history, boom, you can get to the history. Thank you all for rocking with me, man. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the love. East Coast, West Coast, Worldwide, Lost Boys. Y'all know how we do, man. Let's get into it. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Saturday, Saturday. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Gotta do it the right way. It's like Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. It's that Saturday, Saturday. It's that Saturday, Saturday. It's that Saturday. Uh, hip hop nonstop. They got the banging like, uh, you know who it is doing this thing. It's like, uh, what you wanted to do? I came through it like, uh, ain't nobody upset. Oh, uh, he do it like, uh. Yo, first of all, before I even get started on anything, Tara Kemp, Tara Kemp, man, look, Reggie threw the Tara Kemp joint on for the old school joint, I'm gonna feel like, yo, this sound familiar, it's wild, because when you're young, you're just vibing off of the beat, and you know what I'm saying, like the rapper wasn't the best anyway, and the joint, so you just vibing, you know, you get older, you're like, oh no, she sounds white, this is the most, this is like white Mary J before Mary J Blige, this is like... I'm, I'm just gonna rock over some of these kind of like almost rap beats. Uh, uh, uh. You could tell she was like doing a chest pump joint, like letting a little, little brush pop out. Uh, uh, uh. Just wanna hold you tight. Uh. <laughs> you could tell she was doing that in the studio. Uh, uh. What? 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 You're just wilding out. But anyway, y'all know how we do, man. This is what we do. All hip hop. First month. I mean, not Mondays. First Saturdays. I'm tripping Monday. First Saturday is going to be all hip-hop for the rest of the year. You know how we do. Third Saturday is going to be um the, the foreman joints, the universe of soul joints. Yeah, man, you know how we do, how we do when we get down. Look, when we talking hot topics a lot up on here, I can't front. Well, nothing jumping off except for Cat Williams blazing dudes. Throwing shots at dudes, smashing dudes' careers for two hours. Look, it was so wild that Shannon Sharp had an interview about the interview. That's how, like, you know what I'm saying? That's how wild it was. And here's the crazy part. Club Shay Shay or Shay Shay Club or whatever that joint's called never popped up on my timeline until this week. It was, and I've actually read somebody's comment. It was like, dude. You need whatever you paid, <laughs> whatever you paid Cat Williams, because I don't know if I said Kevin Hart. Cat Williams, whatever you paid Cat Williams, you need to pay that brother triple, quadruple that, because you know he brought traffic to your page that you ain't never had before. And I can't front. It's real. I know he had um, Kurt Franklin talking about Prince, and then the last joint I know, he was him and Stephen A jumping on each other's podcast and doing a joint on TV. And before that, I, I don't remember too much. It's like, yo, dude, this dude, and and now it's like, where do you go from there? When you when you bring that, where do you what do you do from that point? You know, just, like, and even Kevin, I mean, even Cat Williams was like, yo, ooh, they gonna come. The, them, everybody, I, everybody I shot at and hit and and burn, they gonna come. They gonna be like, yo, I got something to say. And, yo, that might be, a, I mean, I don't, I don't want that to be a thing. I think that's just messiness. But, yo, it's going to be crazy, man. Like, dudes was out. Luda spit bars for some reason. I don't, I don't, he just, he did like a quick 16. I don't even think it was a full 16. It was like eight. I'm just like, dude, what? I, I, are you battle rapping a comedian for no reason? Why is you, who told you to do that? Like how did you? So I'm like, I don't, I don't even remember what he said. He was just like, he still got the sideburns and all kind of stuff. I'm just like, yo. You know and what was crazy was the Cedric joint. Cedric's like, man, I ain't still nobody stuff, man. He tripping. And and the internet, salute to the internet, cause the internet don't play around. The internet gonna find what you talking about, and especially cause Cat gave like references. He was like, yeah. Um, um, comic View. They was using my joint for the commercials back in the day. Somebody found that joint, put them joints side by side, and it was like, ooh, ooh, wait. 
Hey, gangster, you can't look. You couldn't talk nothing. Like we ain't even understand what. Happened. Like, look, the, the Epstein list came out. Ain't nobody cared. It was just like anybody. Cat Williams say on that list? Nah, I ain't really gonna worry about it then. I just, I just want to know about that list. You know what I'm saying? And then the list when you saw it, like the list had Stephen Hawkins on the joint. Who? Huh? Stephen? Like, Steve, come on, man. How who was? I don't even know what his taste of whatever is. All I know is whoever he was with, man or woman, they was crying the whole time. They was crying. And then you go up in that room. Okay. Go up in the room and it's him just in the chair. Like he might not even be in the bed. He's still in the chair, but it's like he just lean. Cause you know my man had the illest gangster lean. Like he looked like a Z in the chair. Like he looked like the letter Z in the chair just, just z- 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 zigzagged out. I'm typing on please come here. Don't be afraid. <laughs> She crying, he's crying, who knows what his taste is. I just want to be held and maybe changed. <laughs> I gotta change him too? Uh, whatever he want, he's paying. <sighs> it's A, it could be worse. You could be up in that other room. You know what I'm saying? You could be up in there with the Clintons and Trumps together. Who knows what that would be like, but your head with this dude. This is just so nasty. Ugh. But anyway, I ain't gonna talk about that because you can't be talking about dead handicapped people. Like that's just that's like a that's like a whole special room in hell. Like, like oh my god, yeah, dog. And he was dead. He was still like, nang, 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 nang. you thought that was funny, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I laugh over here in this corner right here. Like oh, this is so messed up. But anyway, this is that time of the night. I know what we do, man. And this is a crazy, crazy piece of black history. I know you thinking like, how do you transition from talking about a handicapped dude typing to like most likely underage sex partners to this? I don't know. We do this, man. It's radio, son. This is how we get down. So again, salute. Look, this is how you made that transition. Again, salute to Reggie. He was out here killing him. He was like, yo, he played that one joint. He was like, yeah, yeah son. That joint make you kind of cry a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah a tear trickles your eye. Just a, a tear trickled my... What was that? Slick Rick. Don't cry. Dry your eyes. Here come the chick with two. The little guy said, but, hey. Like, yo, for real, though, some joints do be making you feel a little touchy. And then, like, and the wild part is, like, if a dude, if, uh, if you're around other dudes, they be like, son, you crying? Nah, man. It's all right, dog. I kind of cried, too. A word? I. Right. Yeah, I kind of cry. I, ah, I played you, son. Psych. Why you over here crying, man? What did you, soft marshmallow man? Somebody go get the Ghostbusters for marshmallow man over here. Out here tripping. Yo, come on, man. Yeah, you, yeah. I wish I was Aquaman and I'd wet you up and just have you dissolve, sugar boy. Get out of here, man. You crying over this song. What's wrong with you? You don't understand. Nah, I don't understand, man. Yeah. Therapy is good for the black man. Ah. The last time I heard somebody tell me something was good for the black man, I had a koofy on and I was eating up but bean pies for like three years. No meat. Bean pies. Three years. Nah, man. And all these white women start walking around here looking all sexy, wanting to talk to me. I can't talk to them because my breath and my butt smell the same. Just beans. Nah, I ain't. it's good for the black man. Take that crying over there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to what we was talking about. Uh-uh. Oh, I'm bugging. I'm bugging because I done totally lost everything I was about to say. <clears throat> take it from the top. Take it from the top line. This moment in black history. Salute to all the Muslims out there too, by the way. Salute to all the five percenters. Peace to the gods and the earths. Definitely. Um, yeah. Hi. Right. Hey. This woman, there's not a lot known about her life as a youngster, but here's a beautiful thing. This woman basically helped redesign old school washing machines back in the day. 
You know what I'm saying? She's the one who was like, oh, no, no, we're going to put a ringer on this joint. I ain't going to be out here just, like, ringing these joints out with my hand no more. I'm, and she came up with the ringer, like the joint, you know, them old school joints, this joints back in the day you see, and you put the, and you put the clothes through it, and it just twirls it and, get, and takes the water off. That's right. Sister invented that. You know what I'm saying? Ellen F. Eglin. Eglin? I don't know. Eglin. I'm going to go with Eglin. I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? But she came up with this joint. In 1888, she invented the groundbreaking device, a special device of clothes ringing. You know what I'm saying? It would just take two wooden rollers, attach them to a crank, and it would just basically, as you would let the as the clothes are being, after the clothes were washed, you let it run through that joint, and it would take all the water out. Then you can go ahead and hang them up on the clotheslines. Yo, oh, do people even hang their clothes on the clotheslines anymore? I know Zack Snyder be like, no matter what country, what were part of the world, like Zack Snyder had people hanging their clothes on Rebel Moon. That was a whole nother planet. It was just like, I like the look of clothes on the clotheslines just blowing in the wind. But anyway, yeah, man, she came up with this joint to get clothes, to help clothes get drier faster, bring it back. And it was like, yo, at one point it was like, yo, she really didn't get any credit or uh, anything of that. Now, here's the wild part. The reason she said that was, she was like, yo, a lot of that was, you know, I'm a black, you know, I'm black. And if the, and if it was known that a Negro woman patented this invention, white ladies would not buy the ringer. You know what I'm saying? She was afraid that like, yo, her color would keep this invention, this invention that the world ended up using would just get dismissed and it probably would have or somebody would have like you know how especially nowadays you see people who be like life hack and then you be like man my mama and mama used to do that there ain't no life what y'all just found out how to do this this ain't next some white person would have like a couple of years been like yeah life hack and tried to do it and then be like yo look at what i invented and then somebody would have been like hey ellen they took your joint I still got the patent, so all good work to them. But to know that, yo, they would be out here like, nah, because that's how racist the game was back then. Oh, I don't even know if I even said anything about where this woman was from. My bad, y'all. 1836, she was born in Maryland. Maryland, Maryland. I don't know how y'all want to pronounce that. She died in D.C. in 1916. So she ain't moved that far. She stayed right in the area. She's, you know what I'm saying? She stayed in the DMV area. Salute to the DMV. You know what I'm saying? But that is just a wild piece of history. That's the black moment. That's the black history moment for the night. And I really probably shouldn't say too much more because I know I violated heavily. So let's get into this music and do what we do. Google me. That's all I'm going to say. Somebody let them know we live eternally. Yeah. Uh, we live eternally. Gas. Yo, uh, look, look, look. I'm here thinking about the beans. I said gas. Live eternally. Universal of law. Y'all know who it is. Uh, hold your jaw. I came through the door. I told y'all before. This is what I bring on. No metaphors, no punchlines and crunch time. I guess mine, get yours, cause I'ma get mine. Uh, I'm playing. Anyway, it's my time to go. My bad, y'all. I'm look, 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 told y'all them one time joints be messing me up. Um, y'all have a rest of a good night. Who's winning the game at the Baltimore joint? It was sat, like last time I saw it, like before I really start setting up and everything, getting ready to get get down. You know what I'm saying? It was seven seven. Like, you know, so anyway, man, Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh, but Baltimore is Baltimore. But I, look, anyway, it don't matter. I ain't got no horse in the race anyway. My Eagles, they, I don't know what they doing, but they better get it right for the playoffs. Anyway, um, one time, two times, three times, four times, my free of life, just throw your hands up, buster. Anyway, okay, for real this time. It's like one, two, three, and they say you only live once. That's a lie. You only die once. It's so only time that your God allows you to get out here and continue your journey. Please show the world the very best.
best that you are can be. Everyone have a good night and great rest of the week. I will catch up with you later on Wednesday. Be safe and peace. I'm playing, y'all. Have a good time, y'all. Peace be safe. This is a solo art presentation.